<sighs> I feel like the YouTube algorithm has a fucked up sense of humor. For this to be the thing that winds up getting suggested. I said, I'll read a little bit of it. But if it turns out like the previous part, I'm just going to say fuck it. Go to fucking bed. Anyway, as you can read in the title, of all the fucking creepypastas that I could find randomly to be suggested, one actually said, one that is actually called, the name of the creepypasta is, please don't actually try this. YouTube algorithm, what is your problem, huh? What is wrong? What, who programmed this algorithm? Fucking hell. This is part 24. I need sleep. But yeah, it's called Please Don't Actually Try This. I've been posting bits and pieces of my life here, but I find them a little boring and self-serving. The last one about Juby incidents was already like 70% made up, to my shame. So today I'll post a recipe instead. This is not a cream pasta, at least not yet. <coughs> and I'm writing it from a train in the New York City area. And I'm about to share with you today is one of the most mainly relatively safe ways in which you can access, not quite enter, a place I call the shadow side. And its effectiveness depends on how seriously you take me. Your mileage may vary for the title. Yeah, the title literally says, please don't, please don't actually try this. I about to pass out. I won't tell you that you shouldn't be afraid of the shadow side. Chances are you've already seen it after all. I merely think it was just a recurring dream. I will tell you there is no need to be ignorantly afraid of it, though. There is a difference. Ignorance fuels fear, and fear can give that place a lot of juice to let on. You have to be big on preparation if you want to try this. It's like skydiving. If getting it right on your first try is not something you're good at, then this is not for you. Yeah, you don't want to fuck up skydiving. That, that, that comes with a bit of a risk. If you do drugs or alcohol the night of the event, you're going to have a bad time. If you're going through some serious issues in your life, and are not feeling mentally or spiritually stable, or if you're doing this just to escape, you're going to have a bad time. Why does this sound like something? Like... That, why does this remind me of, like, some sort of phrasing that was used in South Park? Like, I feel like the way this is phrased feels... Oh, my phone turned up. Get... Ah! I'm just saying, it sounds familiar. The sounds... The sounds like the way something would be... The sounds like Mr. Mackey. The sounds... Ugh. If you don't follow my instructions particularly the multiple backups I'll give you, which, trust me, there are for a reason. You're going to have a really bad time. Okay. The name of this game is Three Kings, by the way. Ingredients. A very large, empty, and quiet room, preferably without windows. Windows exist. You need to be able to cover them up to ensure total darkness. Basements usually work well if they're roomy enough. Yes, give me more reason to hate basements. A pack of candles. You only use one. I usually just use the scented ones because they smell nice. Follow those well and a lighter. I mean, how is the fuck you going to light the candle? A bucket of water and a mug. Can the mug be filled with hot cocoa? A fan. I have one of those on at all times. I live in Ohio. Fans are necessary. Two large mirrors. I can't remember the last time I... Huh. Three chairs. An alarm. I, joke's on you. I have alarms on my phone, and I usually have three different alarm clocks around my bed at all times. An active cell phone to forget to charge the goddamn battery. A loved one willing to follow rules and go along with all the madness. A small toy or dear object from your childhood. Set up. 
Also, I agree with the title. Don't ever do any of this shit, guys. Like, just don't fuck with the paranormal. Just like I don't there like there's no benefit. Like, what 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 do you gain? Like, what, what, why would you want to? They go, if you're bored, just play like Call of Duty or Halo or something. There's plenty of stuff to entertain people now. Rather than, oh, let's play a Life and Death thing where we're going up and down stairs and then giant bird vampire people are going to, like, eat us. <coughs> yes, I'm referencing another creepypasta. Everything's a fucking reference on this channel. Start set up around 11 p.m. Place one chair in the center of the room facing north. This is important. Place the other two chairs exactly left and right facing your throne. I think I remember this one. I think I remember, like, I was playing Skyrim at one point when I was listening to somebody read this. Yeah, I, rem I vaguely remember this. Okay, place the other two chairs exactly left and right facing your throne. Distance between your throne and that of your queen and fool should be about the length of your arm to each side, more or less. Place the two large mirrors on the queen and fool's chairs left and right of you, facing you and each other. Try your best to have them stand at a 90 degree angle, or else you may get more or less than three kings. If you sit on your throne facing straight ahead, north, you should be able to perceive your own reflection in each of these two mirrors without actually having to turn your head, nor your eyes to do so. If you see your reflection in the corner of your eye, just barely there, then you've done it right. Place the bucket of water and the mug in front of you, just barely out of reach. Place the fan behind you. Turn it on. Don't set it to maximum power. Medium or low is usually enough. Leave it on. Turn off the lights. Leave the door open and go to your bedroom. Set the candles by the side of the bed. Next to a lighter, your alarm clocks and your cell phone. Leave it charging. Set your alarm clock for 3.30 a.m. Turn off the lights and sleep while holding your power object. How are you not going to fall out of the chair while sleeping? Granted, I have fallen asleep standing up before, but that was usually during times where I had been awake for excess of 80 plus hours. And then usually during the times I slept in between that was usually periods of like 20 minutes a day or something. I've not been that sleep deprived in a long ass time, not even now. But, you know, those are special circumstances back then. Turn up lights, get some rest. But again, how are you not falling out of this chair? Also, that's so uncomfortable. Showtime. Wake up at 3.30 with your alarm clock. Turn it off, but don't turn on the light. You have exactly three minutes to light your candle. Grab your cell phone and make your way to the dark room and sit in your throat. Oh, okay, they didn't... Okay, I thought you meant sleep in the chair. I was like, how are you just sitting in the chair in the dark room? I'm like, come on. Seriously? You should be seated by 3.33 a.m. Don't forget your power object. <clears throat> What's a power object? I forgot this. Check potential red flags. If your cell phone didn't charge for whatever reason, abort the mission. If the alarm didn't go off at exactly 3.30, abort the mission. If you find the dark room clo door closed, remember you left it open, abort the mission. If the fan is turned off, you left it on, abort the mission. Side note, if you have to abort the mission due to any of the above, leave the house with your loved one. Go to a hotel or something. There's no need to run. You have time to grab a jacket and your keys and whatnot. But leave. After 6 a.m., the coast should be clear. If all is going as planned, you can proceed and take your throne. Do not look directly at either of the two mirrors beside you. Do not let the candle go out. The fan is beside you. You must protect the candle with your body. Which is, this sounds way too fucking risky. Again, why would you want to do this? Which is standing in between. There's a reason for this, and you'll soon see. You're going to have a bad time. I get it, Mr. Mackey. Why are you teaching us this, Mr. Mackey? Look, look straight ahead at the darkness. Not at the candle. Not at the mirrors. Just straight ahead, eagle-eyed readers. Surely notes. I didn't say during setup which chair was queen and which chair was fool. That's because it's your job to find out. And from their point of view, you are either their queen or their fool. Hence, three kings. Okay? I won't spoil what happens next. Suffice to say, you won't be alone. And if you have questions, you'll get answers. Sometimes in the form of new questions. That's not how... That's... 
that's not how that's supposed to, to fuck you. But hey, that's the story of humanity, eh? Uh, just stay put and try not to move. Again, do not look directly at the mirrors. Don't chicken out either. You need to wait until 4 or How am I going to sit still for that long and not to start rambling to myself? By 4.34, it's all over. It's okay to tremble a little bit. Just try not to. Not because it affects the ritual or thing. It's just a pussy thing to do while in polite company. Did I mention not to let the candle go out? Yeah, that's what the fan is for. You're protecting the candle with your body. But if you move your body, or to suddenly move the fan, would turn off the candle. That's backup number one. Your loved one is backup number two. At 434, she has to come in the room and call your name. If that won't work, she has to call your cell phone. If that won't work, she has the glass, water, and a bucket. She, can, she can't touch you. No, that's a newbie mistake. Backup number three. Your item of power. The toy or locket. Oh yeah, the cherished childhood object. Whatever object strength is brought along for your ride. It'll show you the way. Shut the... S-H-T-F. What does that stand for? It'll show you the way if... Oh, if shit hits the fan. Gotcha. <coughs> Multiple backups. You gotta be like a Boy Scout if you do these things. Half-ass it, half-ass it all the way so that it won't work. Worst you can do is to take it seriously enough for it to work, and not seriously enough to be prepared for the consequences. If in doubt, refer to the title. Yeah, don't do this. Edit. By my count, 22 of 25 spots. No sleep front page taken by Three Kings. Post this moment. I love no... Okay, it's an edit. I feel like there should be more to this story, but... It's cool. You know, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. There's, like... Dozens of people that actually professionally read creepypasta stories and, you know, actually can narrate effectively. Because, like I said, a lot of these guys probably practice it and rehearse it. For me, I just... I just wanted to read and part of it, you know, being unrehearsed was you guys could, you know, be there with me for whatever reactions I would have to things. Because, like I said, I've pretty much heard every creepypasta in existence at some point in my life. I just can't actively remember them half the time. My memory... Like I said, you can't read just about every book in existence and then remember half the shit, okay? It just doesn't work that way. Because I tend to read just about everything. But, you know, you can't just read thing after thing after thing and really remember... Or, like, like I, I think I remember listening to this particular one. I think I was playing Skyrim, and I was just listening to, you know, creepypasta narrators. But, of course, like I said, they're a lot better. Their voice is better sounding than mine. They actually rehearse things. They are actually good at acting and stuff. I'm just some guy reading. That, that, that's, that's just what it is. I'm just some random dude reading a story. But, yeah, you guys got to share that experience with me, so I hope you enjoyed the ride, and like I said, there's plenty of creepypasta content out there, but I'm glad I could add a tiny bit out there to YouTube. So, I hope all of you had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Bye. <sighs> so fucking tired. Ugh. Why does everything fucking hurt? Ugh. Next hour is probably just me listening to ASMR and laying in bed, everything fucking hurting. Man, it's funny, like I'm mean, fucking exhausted to the point that I wouldn't be safe to drive a fucking car. Same time, can't sleep.
yea, insomnia, yet extreme tiredness. Fucking hell. I should drink some more water, but I don't want to go back down the stairs again. I'm just too tired. Wake enough to actually finish turning everything off. <sighs> I need to get a little sleep.